In my last video, I gave a brief introduction about nonlinear analysis and its types. Today, we will set up boundary nonlinearity using hypermesh and optistruct. We will perform a nonlinear contact analysis in which we will simulate the three point bending of a sheet metal plate. So let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download and use it to follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall setup process. The first step is to mesh the model and provide material and property to all the components. We will also create RBE2 rigid elements at required locations. Once the geometry is imported, three different surface components can be seen in the model browser. The first step is to create a 2D mesh on all the surfaces. Open the auto mesh tab from 2D panel. We will use an element size of 5 mm. Select all the surfaces in the model in the surface selection box. With all other settings as default, create the 2D mesh. Now create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. We will use the rigid tab from 1D panel to create RBE2 elements. Set dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. Let's use the by face selection criteria to select all the nodes on this support face. Create the rigid. Similarly, we will also create a rigid element for the second support cylinder. This makes both the support cylinders non-deformable rigid components. We will also create a rigid for the upper roller as we are not interested in observing any deformation on this component. Now create a new material and provide a proper name. We will assign the default mechanical properties of steel. Create a new property. With card image as P shell, select the steel material in proper selection box. Let's use a thickness value of 1 mm. Now we will assign this property to the support, plate and roller component. Even though the support and roller are now rigid, the property must be assigned to formulate the contact characteristics in the next step. Now we can start with the most crucial part of contact analysis setup. We will manually create contact surfaces with proper element orientations. These surfaces will define the regions of the model which will interact with each other during the actual contact analysis. Let's take a look at the method to create contact surfaces manually in Hypermesh. Let's hide the rigid elements for now. Create a new contact surface and provide a name to it. Click on the element selection box to select surface elements. Set the option to add shell faces. Now select the upper surface of this roller and click on add. The normal direction specified by the pyramids must be pointing outward for the contact to work properly. Similarly, add the elements from second support. As you can see, the normals are not oriented outward. Reject the step and check box next to reverse normals. Now add the elements. The normal vectors are now pointing outward. Create a new contact surface. Give a proper name to avoid confusion in later steps. Select all the elements on the plate. Be sure to reverse the normals so they are properly oriented in the direction of the support. Now create a third contact surface. This will contain the plate elements just like the previous surface. The difference will be the normal directions. 
Lastly, we will also create a contact surface for the roller. Select the lower elements in the element selection box. All the necessary contact surfaces have now been defined. Now we need to couple these four contact surfaces into two different contact interfaces. We will also specify some additional settings for the contact to work properly during the analysis. Create a new contact. Set slave and master selection box to contact surfaces. Now select plate as slave and support as master. Set discretization as surface to surface and enter track as finite. Let's duplicate this contact for roller and plate. Select plate as slave and roller as master. Let's hide all the contact surfaces to view the newly created contact. Click on review to visualize the contacts. Both the contacts have been created properly. Now we can move to the analysis setup. As the contact settings have now been defined, we can start with the actual analysis setup. We will apply proper constraints at support locations and also on the plate ends to hold it in place. To simulate the bending, we will apply imposed displacement boundary condition on the upper roller. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. We will select the master nodes of the support rigids to constrain them for all degrees of freedom. Let's change the relative size value for better visualization. Now let's use the by geometry selection criteria to select the nodes on these edges of the plate. Uncheck the boxes next to DOF 4, 5 and 6 and create the constraints. Lastly, select the master node of roller rigid. Select all degrees of freedom. We will apply an imposed displacement of 20 mm in negative y direction. Create a new load step and enter a proper name. Set analysis type as nonlinear static. Select the SPC load collector in appropriate selection box. Right click on NL param large displacement and click on create. Provide a name to this load collector. We will set the number of load increments to 10. Similarly, let's create the NL out card image load collector. Check the box next to NINT and enter value as 10. Now press Ctrl F to add the parameter card to the analysis setup. Search for expert NL from the options. We will turn on this feature by selecting yes. For faster computation, we will enable the hash table assembly setting. Now let's add the global output requests card. Check the box next to CONT F 
and select format as H3D to output contact force results. We will also output the displacement results in H3D format. To observe strain and stress plots, let's do the same for strain and stress options. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space in all file names to avoid any errors during the run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the nonlinear analysis solver. This may take some time to solve. As the analysis is now complete, let's view the results in Hyperview. Hide the results component from Model Browser. Open the Contours panel and apply the displacement results. We can adjust the numeric format of legend as required. Let's view the contact forces. Similarly, we can also view the elemental stresses generated in the plate. We have successfully implemented nonlinear contact interface using Hypermesh and Optistruct. And this is how we can perform nonlinear contact analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a big thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.